And how was your weekend? Great. Entertaining. I was entertained. I'll say that much. Justin Bourne, Nick Kiprios, Derek Brandeo, Jennifer Rolnick, and Sammy McKee here to break it all down. What a weekend. I got chased out of Scotiabank Arena Saturday night during the Raptor game. Now, word is that the uh, Academy Awards have placed Chris Rock on long-term IR. Oh, God. Not, not sure if they're going to use the extra cap space to go sign Ricky Gervais or not. <laughs> Massive cap implications, I imagine. Where do we... Do we even have time to talk about the Toronto oh, Maple Leafs? No, we can't. You can't talk about hockey. I can't think about anything else except for Will Smith and Chris Rock. I say everyone's exhausted today because it happened at like 11 at night. So everyone stayed up for oh. an hour to keep up on the memes. And now no one slept enough last night. Clearly nobody saw it because they were all watching the Leaf game. Was that, was that over by then or it no? Was, was what was the timing on that? Timed. I, I went to, I was at the Leafs game last night. And uh, I, the first word I saw of a potential thing was Ben Ennis tweeted something. He said, I'm 99% sure that Chris Rock just got slapped by Will Smith. And I was like, what? And then all my group chats lit a blaze with the video that I sent and to yeah. you guys immediately. Yeah, thank you and for that. And boy, oh boy, I don't know how many more times I've been that shocked in my life watching that video. I, I, truly stunning. Truly stunning. Are we going to do takes here? Oh, we go we, around the table? You, you have to. I, you just cannot let it go. Well, what, what do you got? Do you want me to go first or do you want to go? Well, other than the fact that we're 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 shocked, but uh, yeah, give me your thoughts on it. Well, I got I got a couple thoughts. I'll give you three in in bullet point form. One, you, you just can't hit anyone anymore. You can't. It sucks. <laughs> I wish you could, but you can't just. We can't live in a society where okay. you can just pop someone. Are, are are we all on agreement there? Because there's a sense that there was a line crossed and. Uh, Mess with a bull, you get the horns. Oh, and that, see, that's the other factor here is I want to ignore my logical brain saying you can't hit someone because that's wonderful, right? You love the idea of some guy runs his mouth and he gets smacked, but you just can't hit people. You just, no, no. See, I'm always going to throw this back. The hockey. I'm well, bringing, I'll always bring it back to the hockey. It needs to be relevant for so, the show. So you are one of those that says uh, you just can't hit your stick over somebody's head in, in a game of hockey. You just can't do that. And it's like, <laughs> no, you, you can. can. And he did. But, so you're wrong. He did. But, like, then there's going to be, like, that's whether you call it assault or battery. You can't just hit people. No. He can, and he did. <laughs> okay, so Show the Kyle Dubas, we can and we can will. You can do it without repercussions. Like, we he knows that. You can. You can do it, and there were no repercussions. Yet. The man got to sit there and <laughs> wait for his speech. Nobody said boo to him. I know, it was I'm wild. watching him win the uh, Academy Award, I'm like, he should be in jail. <laughs> You should be getting this award right now in jail. <laughs> Holding, grabbing it through the bars. And First my, off, I'd like and to thank. Again, the, the whole hockey thing here is it's not what you can or can't do and who can say that you can or can't do. It's what you can do and get away with. Right. And where are the consequences? And there were none last night for him. Not he got immediately. To sit, not eat, immediately. Eat, 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 eat dinner. No, no, no. There's oh, nothing. Boys there's, a, him there's, up. A him, there's a video of him at like, the bar after <laughs> dancing where, with the Oscars. Where, where do you, you say that he can't do that? Watch his night last no, night. No, no, I know. But last night is not the rest of his life. I'm sure at Th some point there's going to be some. Oh, you hope so because then you're, you're, you're. Your point doesn't have a leg to stand on. You're right. You're right. And I would love to be wrong about this. I would love to be to live in the world where if you sass another guy, I disagree with you. I just come across with a backhand on the show here. That's what he did. And he's like. I know he's got away with it so he far. He got to go but, home. He got, went to the after party. Uh, okay. Denzel Washington's loving him. Listen, Every, there's, there's a, he it, got away with it. Celebrities are just completely unhinged. Like, a, I just. Yeah. I, here's, it's the biggest night of his life he has been acting since however long yeah. and i mean when the fresh prince started he's probably doing stuff before that he's been around forever he's been famous forever and he finally he gets to the top of the mountain he wins an academy award for an, an academy award he, an didn't, Oscar. he didn't know he was gonna win it 
Yeah, he was a betting favorite. Like yeah. it was, yeah, was, it was, it was, big, big it was, favorite. it was fait accompli that he was, go- he, he was going to win it. And he, I, like, you are that mad about a joke that you go up there and you take away, like, that. Smack. There's a lot of back history, though. I know. Chris Rock and, and Jada. He didn't, he didn't even Jada write the joke. No, this, it wasn't about the joke, really. He did like the joke. He didn't, he well, laughed. He laughed. Until he saw his wife's reaction. Yeah, and well, and you know what she gave him, eh? <laughs> you just going to sit there and take it? <laughs> no, I'm not, honey. <laughs> bump, 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 bang. I can't, That's exactly what happened. I, I can't believe that happened. The second thing is, like, Will Smith is seriously not right. No. Like, that's the sad part of it. Like, the man needs some help. He needs... Then he's not good. The other thing is that fame messes people up, and you run in some fame, famous circles... I don't. I can't think of like anyone who's been famous from like their teenage years that makes it to their old age without being nuts. I mean, I, maybe there's a nicer there's a way few. to say that, there's, but like, there has it's to be Britney, a few. it's Michael Jackson, it's Will, it's uh, Kanye, it's I don't just I don't know, man. I will say this, and I've had some uncomfortable position, uh, you know, spots. I've been in uh, over twenty years of sports net. Roger Millions. I mean, I it, uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Nothing remotely like that, <laughs> right? But I give Chris Rock full credit. He saved the show last night. Yeah. Absolutely saved it. Like, he could have had a reaction. He could have shut it down. He could have been knocked out. Imagine <sighs> that one. You're peeling Chris Rock off the floor. Who's going to go near him? It, it did remind me of when Jose Bautista took the bomb from Rogue Odor and uh, he just took it. You know, he took it. So, Stood up, didn't go down. Good on you. I just utter disbelief. And listen, I liked the the theory that it was a, like the work theory that it was a that it was a it was set up. That's the worst theory and so, worst take. There's there's, like, there's a million better ideas than that one. I know, but here's the thing. It got Listen, going into this weekend, had you thought about the Oscars once? Had it been in? I'm your, not going to hear any theory that that wasn't a real has, thing. That has happened. it been in your? It has was. it been? Had you been talking to any of your friends about it? Have you? It was. The, it was. You know. That's about what how you the, need to, the, for the Oscars. And I have a million group chats with a million different people that had never mentioned the Oscars for years. Yeah, no, Sam. And it then, got a lot of attention. That doesn't make the your biggest, point good. Yeah. I, so you think it was think set that, up? No, I don't think that. But I will hear the conspiracy theories that it was set up. I will I've hear seen it. both those men act not for my whole life. Chance. That was not acting. I'll hear the theory. I believe it wasn't set up, but I will believe that. I'll hear the theory. I will hear it. All right, let's skip past that terrible take. What? No, what? no, no, no. Oh, That's just... Hollywood would do something fabricated for more eye for more views. They're actors. You're gonna you, you're gonna you're gonna put your reputation on there. Ah. Will Smith. And Chris Rock's just going to live in the guy who takes it. and You tell me he's unhinged. You tell me that was a, a volcano ready to explode. Listen, right? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just presenting Man's another Man's crying theory. in his post, in his uh, you know, acceptance, 10-minute acceptance speech. If your theory well. is correct, Ricky Gervais should have had the crap beat out of him long <laughs> before Chris Rock. Long before. Uh, yeah, if we're doing a slappable power rankings. And his comment towards his wife was was unkind out of line classless big time okay talk to him at the but, bar after but there is a level of acceptance when you have a chris rock up there or ricky gervais that you are just gonna get insulted somebody's going it's down it's true and there is a buffer zone that chris rock had yeah that will smith completely crossed yeah completely crossed wild Insane that that happened. <laughs> he is. There is a level of acceptance. Whether you go to a roast, yeah, yeah. Whether you go watch these guys yeah, live, here we go. But you know, there is a bit there, of there, like he didn't nastiness. He didn't, again, unkind, cruel, whatever you want to say, classless, what tasteless. Yes, 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 yes. To the point where a man should be physically assaulted because yeah, he, of that. You can't hit people. Can't hit people. I, I will say, but I you saw. Can. But you can. But you can. 
but you can. But maybe I saw um, uh, someone say. That, <laughs> I will say that like it's a mean joke. It's a terrible joke. It's all that. But like, given the well of jokes to draw on with Will and Jada, maybe they thought this was the safer line of questioning. Correct. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> okay. And he won't file any charges. No, he said he wasn't going to. Oh, did he say that? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, well, I guess you can hit someone. You, so is this a standard that he's I can, not quite can a I guy go, you can hit? A great line from. Uh, can I go slug you, Sammy, and just hope that you don't press charges, or will I get charged anyway? Kipper, if you slug me, I got a bad chance of coming at coming too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want. I don't really want that I don't to know. happen. Like, again, <laughs> you want to find out? Let me get a piece of content. Give me a slug. What movie is it? He's not quite a guy you can't hit. It's a uh, Leo DiCaprio, Matt Damon. Anyway, again, uh, Chris Rock. Could yeah. easily file charges, probably take 50% of his ev uh, every future dollar <laughs> that he'll ever make moving forward. Yeah. Well, I, it, it'd be wild if Chris Rock just takes the slap and they move on and nothing else happens. I think he's a little concussed today. <laughs> he's probably, you know, once the adrenaline wears off going, I'm not real happy about that. You and think, I kind of wish I went back at him. I don't. You know, there's got to be a part of him that's humiliated going, himself well, right now because he got B-slapped by... I probably just should have swung on him or I something. Can, I mean, can you imagine they fought? Like he, like his first instinct was to well, come back. It's got to be a ninety percent chance when you slap a guy, you're going to get fought. Like, got to be. You know, that's a. Can, you could not have handled it with more class than Chris Rock did. Fair. Uh, I'm telling you, he saved it. If he just Fair. said, "I'm done, I'm out," what happens? What happens? Or well, like I said, he gets knocked being out in that room. How quiet it goes, and it's just everybody's looking at each other, and he's screaming at him. Yeah. Anyways, want to talk about hockey boys? Yeah. Yeah, we should. It's just, you know what? Do you want to talk about Canada going to the World oh, Cup? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, or Kipper <laughs> setting a fire at Scotiabank Arena. Okay, I took my mom. To the Raptors the, game. To the Raptors game. My mom's 80 years old. <laughs> a hockey mom from the moment I put on skates at yeah. 7. Spent my whole life with her. Never discussed the Raptors. Until the final where they won the championship. Yeah. And now I'm at the game, and she's telling me Nick Nurse doesn't smile enough. She can tell me which uh, players do their their <laughs> their uh, their, their uh, religious cross before every game. <laughs> she's she loving Freddie. I'm like, who are you? Yeah, that's great. And, and then the speaker catches on fire, and we're watching the whole section cl clear out. We yeah. don't know why. Yeah. And then it's like. I'm in the 90s all over again. My clothes started smelling like uh, like cigarette smoke. And, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> and then we saw what everybody else saw. The the speaker was on yeah. fire, and, and it stunk. Oh, man. Did that's, you, so, that's then, so then did they bring people back in? Like, no. I don't know. No. They did, it was just, it was, that was it. Gone. 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 They just said, uh, go home. What was the mood amongst the, the patrons? Sour? Pissed. Yeah. I yeah. Can imagine. Yeah, because it. You're not getting your money back, eh? No, you are getting your money oh, back. Oh, you are? Oh, oh yeah? no, no. They got to refund oh, every man. ticket. Do you think so, MLSE will recover? <laughs> <laughs> Probably a, a, a $2 million hit. Oh, man. That's and a, you know what it is, I'm too. I'm charging the speaker it's, company. It's just not the tickets. But you think about, like, the food and beverage that went to waste. Oh, yeah. And there, there were so many people... And this happens to me every once in a while for the Leaf game is that uh, I'll, I'll order dinner and they'll say it, it won't come in time for puck drop or tip off. You want to come back and after the first period. Oh, yeah. So you've, you've gone, you've Ordered had drinks, your, you've yeah. had appetizers, you've got an open tab, and all those people just left. There was probably a lot of can, open tabs. Can I tell you something right now? Those people that work in the kitchen were so fired up. They're like, oh, I'm bringing home steak oh, tonight. Yeah, I'm yeah, bringing yeah. home pizza oh, tonight. It's, it's all thrown I'm out. Oh, yeah. well, a couple of French yeah. bulldogs were eating couple, pork yeah, roast. I was say, <laughs> those, those kitchen fellas, there's, there's something going home. I'll tell you right yeah. now. I, whether it's MLSE or anyone else that ho owns a, a team, I mean, you've been through this already with empty se seats. Yeah, you're just like, come and on, And now man. it's just another kick in the teeth. Yeah. But, uh, another slap in the face. They huh? came back. They won. Sammy, Raptors. Or Raptors Leafs? won. Oh, I mean, it was they were going away. They were winning by thirty. So that's good. Raptors are fired up, and the Leafs. Your your team's uh, going to the World Cup after thirteen thousand three hundred forty three days of no World Cup. 
So congratulations. Thank you. Very upset that I couldn't be there yesterday. Obviously, I had to work. Oh, tough job. I had to go watch the Leafs and Panthers play, I know. Yeah. But uh, just really, really fired up. And I just respect the passion of that team. Everyone involved with Canada soccer is incredibly passionate from John Herman down. They care a lot. You can tell how much they, they play for each other. They just impress me. They're a really gritty, fun team to cheer for, and they I'm are. very and happy. Jamaica wanted nothing to do Poor, with that Those, last guys, those night. guys coming up here to play in minus 15 with nothing on the line against a team with everything to prove. Not a great spot for Jamaica. But, yeah, really happy yeah. for Canada. And this, really is, happy. this team is not just happy to be there. They could go and they could scare some countries. They could, they could win a game or two, no doubt. Maybe get to the round of 16, maybe. Nice. Oof. All right, boys. We gotta do some. We got to, YouTube's we got time fired. for the Leafs now. YouTube's fired up. Oh, could you guys stick to the Leafs? No, stick to the Leafs. Just do whatever we can't, want. Can't ignore the world. We're glad you're aboard. Yes. Sportsnet's YouTube channel. If you're wherever you're downloading this podcast, and of course, Sportsnet 590, the fan. Okay, Leafs weekend. Win one, lose one. Saturday night, the game that they should have won. Right. Yeah. Little. little but, Hey, it's a it's been a freaky weekend, anyways. Right. So uh, we'll start with their their win against a Florida team, where many have suggested that uh, perhaps the Panthers were still hungover from a, a Thursday night party in Montreal. Uh, they don't come out with uh, any regulation wins against Ottawa or the Leafs. Mm-hmm. I don't think we saw the best of what they've had to offer throughout no. the regular season, but still, for the Leafs to come up big. Uh, and get some good goaltending and Tavares and a lot of good positives out of this game. Yeah, you can only play the team that's ahead of you, you know, and they they gave a, a good effort last night. Florida, you know, didn't seem to have a ton of pop. Like, did you notice Claude Giroux? Was, was he, did he play? Like, I didn't... A, a lot of their stars. Not Huberto, their best. Barkov. Yeah. You can, you can just tell they were probably off a little bit. Right. The biggest takeaway for me, if I were to list my <clears throat> takeaways from that hockey game, Peter Mrazek. That I, that was the first hockey game that I've been like, Peter Mrazek played well and was a contributing factor to the win. That was the best he's played as a Toronto Maple Leaf last night. Um, you know, thought he was a little bit more controlled, made some big saves. He looked like a goaltender. Uh, and what does that mean for the Leafs? Like, is there enough runway for this guy to matter, to be a guy? Let's say he plays well from now till the end of April. Yeah. And Jack Campbell's terrible in game one or bad down the stretch. Do you ever feel like you could put him in? Yeah, that, I mean, you're you, too you, many steps ahead. You're you're if <laughs> right. If it's, ifs and buts for candies and nuts. Really, really big if here. Yeah, but and it starts the if. Of course it can, and we uh, we assume no word today, but Mrazek should start against the Boston Bruins tomorrow night. So there's another chance to kind of snowball what you're talking about, but it's still not an ideal uh, game plan in my opinion, to no. to think that you can get Peter Mrazek going here in the next 19 games and get him ready for round one. That's that's not where their focus is. No, but so, at least he's going to be ready to be a backup, maybe. Like, you put a couple of games together. I'll be honest, if he was terrible again, you could easily convince me that Shelgren is the better of the two and should be the guy going forward as the backup goaltender. So how many starts this year do you think Peter Mrazek has against playoff teams? Can't be many. What's he played? 16, 17 games. They're usually putting him in against weaker opponents, I imagine. He's got four starts against playoff teams. Oh. Uh, Carolina, Florida last night, Minnesota, and Washington. He's 4 0 0 with a 175 goals against average and a 931. So save just percentage. put him up, up against the good teams and you'll be fine. <laughs> Is that what you're telling us? I'm just saying that he's a microcosm right. for the Leafs. He plays awesome against good teams and plays down to other teams the cra- that don't make no sense <laughs> the craziest part is we called this going into the weekend you in particular sam said i could see him sleeping through montreal yeah lose to montreal i actually said they would lose montreal win against florida and we'd be talking about matthew's 50th goal today but didn't get there 48 now yep the other thing you got to factor in is jack campbell is close here, guys. I hear Thursday night is a possibility. Really? Oh, Winnipeg. yeah, really? So the other part of the equation is, is what does this do once he gets uh, brought back? Where does the salary cap go? How much room you need to save for Muzzin? There, 
it could be a possibility that Mrazek still, on paper, goes down to the Marlies. I imagine that will be the case then. Like, I liked your idea that they would just call him back up on game days. If he practices with the Marlies or the Leafs, does it make much of a difference to him? Probably not. It's not ideal. No, it's not. And probably, again, uh, we've heard from Sheldon Keefe talk about this, that, you know, it can bruise your ego, and it's a tough pill to swallow, but it, at least he, he he looked professional last night. In, For sure. In, backstop and a win now waivers wise because he's recently cleared he's fine to go up and down i believe if i'm not mistaken it's a 30 day window before he has to re-clear yeah Mm. so we'll keep an eye on that but jack's jack's coming back soon if not this week you you know that uh it'll be probably another seven days maybe at the most you know what was different for Mrazek for me? He caught a couple pucks. Like a few things hit him and didn't end up right back in the middle of the slot. Mm-hmm. That's a good start. Yep. A little bit more controlled. Let's get Sheldon Keefe, uh, his comments on Mrazek, and we'll start to one of a few uh, Kippers Clippers. Shows that he's a battler. That he competes, he believes in himself. Uh, he was outstanding again tonight. Uh, that's two in a row now. That he's, he's looked like... The- the goalie that he is, you know, and that he has been through his career. So that's great. He's bounced back and responded well to adversity here. That is uh, just a terrific sign and, and uh, a testament to his character. Might be still too of a too small of a, a sample size for me to say that he's back or he is yeah. the goalie that you thought he was and blah, 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 blah. Sometimes but the puck just hits you. They're, they're, they're trying to build him up. Like Sheldon's been known now for for that you know he he puts a lot of work in the media he he doesn't uh he isn't horrible for your confidence uh, as long as you're on the right side of that and we'll get into (laughs) willie nylander a little later but uh he's pulling for him and he's it's it's hopeful comments needs him so yeah i i don't know with mrazic here fellas i really just feel like he has the perfect mentality like we've talked about this he just doesn't seem to care like one way or the other he comes out after a game sounds the exact same that he does after they win like he really doesn't go up and down in terms of emotions so if i there's the type of guy that i actually could market f- and that could dig himself out of it yeah because yeah. ter- he's not gonna beat himself up like you know jack campbell does or somebody else does he just really doesn't seem to yeah. like what do you think Kip? you got a bad look well, in your face well there. i just i i listened to you and it's it's positive until you're making tea times, and then it's a bad thing yeah. that you should be more emotionally vested. Definitely. But I just think, like, if there's a guy that can dig himself out of the terrible hole that he's put in with his attitude, he seems to actually have a good attitude. We've talked about it a lot of times. I don't show. have an issue one way or another with his attitude. I have an issue with how aggressive he is in yeah. that. <laughs> It's, and it's how, his goaltending, not his attitude, that's an issue. From day one, the moment I heard them sign him, it was like, boys, when he's on, he's on. But when he's off, look out. Yeah. And he's been off more than he's been on. I guess if you're, he's got that ceiling to play well for stretches, you know, you go down 2-0 in a series and you got to go to a maybe, you, you know, you catch lightning in a bottle on a hot streak and he carries you through, but... Yeah, I don't think he's suddenly a different person than the person we talked about in the first three quarters of the season, but good to see him going the right way. All right. Next on the list. You guys mentioned uh, in our uh, little pregame talk, uh, Tavares, two two goals. And again, was it... uh, Was it one of those games that... uh, Was it a breakthrough game for Tavares? Certainly, uh, it's nice to see two goals on on the sheet. Is it uh, enough to think, like, there's a chance that this second line now is coming on again? Not when both goals are assisted by number 16, the the guy he wants to be playing with and isn't. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go to Sheldon Keefe and see if uh, Sheldon can uh, do the same for John Tavares as he can Mrazek with his post-game comments. It was really good tonight in all facets of the game. Uh, but for him to find two pucks there right around the net, and he's as good as anyone in hockey below the hash marks uh, in the slot there. Uh, so for him to get those pucks there and make good on them was great. Um, two great plays by Mitch also 
the first one to just to, to, to deliver that puck there and get it to the net. You're a rebound and then great vision to make that play and find him on the backside. So great plays by Mitch, great finishes by John. And, and it, like I said, he was great in all facets of the game today. So to get rewarded on, on the power play uh, was really good. It's nice that they like it's like a footnote mentioning Mitch Marner and yeah. his plays. Diana, he, three assists. Last right? He night. brought well. He brought up Mitch unprompted like three times last night. In yeah. turn with the Mikheyev goal, which we're going to play the clip on, he just he brought up Mitch and listen. Mitch was the catalyst of all of three really huge goals for the Leafs, and he was no, no. He's been the catalyst since like the last thirty games where he's led the league in scoring. Like yeah. since you know, since January fifteenth, he has 50, he has fifty three points. I think it was uh, I read today in the Athletic. I think Jonas Siegel wrote an article on on Mitch Marner, and it's it's the same thing. It's like okay, can can we give this guy some a credit here? He's kind of going on. It's almost like a given that he's just going to go and, yeah. and score two points a game, one point six. I don't know what his average is in the last thirty games, but it's just like it's it's almost like an afterthought here. You think so? How good? I don't know. I feel like oh, he no, he's, he's every been time. buried by. We talk about it every day. Austin. No, no, he gets buried by the the chase for uh, fifty and sixty goals. I don't know. Look, if that's true. Your post game, yeah, didn't mention Marner. No, no, you mentioned Mrazic, mm -hmm. Tavares, mm -hmm. Morgan Riley. Not even a mention. Just like here, we did Mrazic, right? Tavares, <laughs> Riley at three points as well. It's pretty good. I yeah, and I. I I have always said this. I really believe, and last night's another example. Yeah. Mitch Marner is the engine of this team, but I know it's hard to get. I'm hey, listen. He doesn't get the credit he deserves. We've talked about it before. We have. We've talked, but this is the thing that we talked about. He needs a good playoff this year to go into insane popularity. If the Leafs win a couple rounds, God forbid, go to Lord Stanley's final. And Mitch Marner is playing like he's playing right now. Yeah. He will be undeniably yes. and if he the most popular. He, he will be, be ripped. Correct. But that's, that's. I, mean, I would say that's, you know, the people will see him maybe as a microcosm of the Leafs and the regular season success and waiting for that to come through. But not, I, but not Matthews. He's not a microcosm. He's I don't not. know. I, I, Why I, is that? I don't know. What, what is your thing with this? That you think like Matthews is like too hyped up. Like, have you been following the season? <laughs> I have, and I've. I just, I just. It's it's funny to me listening to Sheldon Keefe yeah. talk like Marner's just an afterthought. I, I don't get it. Yeah, I. I mean, I think it is assumed he is that good that it's like assumed he's going to play consistently well. You know, the the first portion of the season it didn't happen, and everyone then you hear about it. And then he gets back to where they expect him to, and it kind of goes away again. Anyway. I will say, on, the, on this note about Matthews, last night was the first game, I think, this season where I went, wow, he was bad. I thought he was really bad last night. I, I, I didn't want to do it on, on the broadcast because the Leafs beat Florida and didn't yeah. want to be a downer. But he passes that puck on the 2-0 on to Marner, who's covered. He, I almost fell out of my chair when he did that. He had the turnover the night before to end the, the end the game, and he had another turnover similar late in the game against Florida. He was, I, I mean, last night, I, that's the worst uh, I've uh, seen him play in one game. You watched his empty net goal last night, and it's almost as if, like, he's probably just over-consumed by this chase. That's what I get yeah, out of watching him. I've been, I, but I've thought that he's been good mostly. Like, last night was a weird game for me for yeah. him. But I agree that, like, you know, definitely on your mind, you're firing at the net with 1.5 seconds. And, and I agree, whatever. Saturday night, it was just a a horrific play all the way around yeah. that led to the Byron uh, oh, game-winning goal. When he got his skates kicked out from under him? Yeah, well, did Byron's did foot you want did a penalty on his that? heel for sure. Of course I No, did. that's not a So that's I'm not with Kimber, I didn't think it, he definitely got his heel kicked out, but I didn't yeah. think it was a trip. I don't no, know if that makes sense. Oh, so you could just skate through him with your skate? No, knock you, him down you, you, at the you, most important you, part you, of the you ice? Can, you can if it's completely um, incidental contact. He, he hit him with a skate. The puck was on his stick. He falls down. Yeah. It goes down the other way. They go and they score the goal. I guess I the saw game. no intention from Byron to do it. So? that What is intention involved in tripping? You never. I mean, how many times do you? Yeah, that's not a. That's not an NHL. We do not agree. That was a trip. No, I mean, listen. No. I no. It was a good non-call.
Okay, well, Matthews and, never gets a penalty called on him, so why would he get one called on him there? Well, that's a good point, too. The best player in the reason. league with, with the puck in his stick in a crucial moment gets a skate kicked out from under him. There's no call. But to your point, <laughs> that's probably one of those plays where, you know, it's just a little bit too much. For Matthews. For just Matthews. keep her simple. And, you know, the one thing that never got mentioned Saturday night was – Morgan Riley cheating on the play. So on the against Montreal. So Matthews play. has got two guys, including Byron, who Sammy wants suspended <laughs> for a, a skate on skate. Kick yeah. him out of the league. And Morgan now on a two, two score is going to now slip down and skate into a pass for the game winning goal, yeah. which doesn't happen. And now, it's a two or three on one. Yeah. You know, there was even moments last night where the score is four, two, where I was like, you know, and you've talked about this season where it's like, okay, D pinching and aggressive and activating. Great. Up four, two against the Panthers on, you know, let's just, eh, let's just get on the right side of the puck a little bit more. They, they, they does. They do seem to have trouble switching mindsets to protecting a lead. One guy, they play one way, one guy who, uh, isn't shy about giving Mitch Marner credit. It was Tavares last night saying he's the best he's uh, ever played with, ever seen, which is great. And uh, we'll get they Sheldon. Play them together. We'll get Sheldon yeah, Keith yeah. uh, his comments on uh, on John Tavares' night. We played it. Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh, my God. I know. There's so much to talk about. We, we Six were... concussions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. The, okay. the, we have the uh, Tavares line mate. We have Keith on Mikheyev and, you know, the element that he's added to his game, him getting bumped up the lines and getting to play on that second. Uh, okay, before we, before we go to Keith, um, I got a Kipper's clip. This is uh, uh, Mikheyev's agent uh, talking to uh, Mikheyev right after the game. Show me the money. That's it, brother, but you got to yell that shit. Show me the money. I need to feel you. Danny. Show me the money. Danny. You better yell. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the Kipper's Clipper of the year right there. But the thing is, his agent really tweeted that. Yes, he did. His agent is no joke. And ben Milstein is saying like, it every game. God, McKay is getting, game. getting decidedly uncheap, isn't he? Oh, my gosh. And now he's figured out how to uh, get his hands to catch up to his feet. Yeah. Do you know this is so uh, Anthony Petrilli writes for Maple Leaf Hot Stove. He went back and watched all of McKayev's goals throughout his Leafs career, and he has two on his backhand total. And it's the last two games. One, hey, sorry, he had one other one. He batted in his backhand. But, like, this is a new little wrinkle to his uh, his arsenal. If he can add this move, and, boy, that'd be big for him and the Leafs. Should we, uh, should we get what Sheldon Keefe has to say on him? Let's do it. It's a big goal by Mickey. He's making good on these breakaways here. Now this is a good development uh, for, for him and for us. Uh, so his confidence is high. Uh, another one today he uses his speed to take it across and go around the goaltender. Um, yeah. Like I said, he looks, looks real confident. Another big time play by Mitch to find him there coming late in Mickey's effort and speed to, uh, he wins the race, beats Barkoff up the rink and, and uh, gets into that spot. It's great. So Tavares with, the two power play goals in a perfect world. You hope that one day they'll score even strength goals. Mm, boy, <laughs> hasn't right? been coming, man. One of these days, maybe guys, they're heavily outscored that but second line. I, so it looked way you better. Beat with Florida the best team in the East. Mm -hmm. And you're still, going into this week against the Boston Bruins with serious questions on your second line. And now, guys, I've said this all along. I never liked the fourth line. I didn't like it on the weekend. And I think that's another question mark. Your second line and Agreed. your fourth line. Agreed. So would you do the whole, and we've talked about it before, but Rob Peter to pay Paul, would you want to take someone from the first line, put them on the second, take someone from the third line, yes. put them on the fourth? I, I would yes. too. 100%. And I, I, it's really interesting that they're so reluctant to go away from these lines. I know the first and third line work, but the other two don't. Okay, before we get into the fourth line, let's just touch on uh, the second line. Outside of the power play goals, the Nylander-Tavares experiment. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with it? Well, 
what do you do with Willie Nylander here? Because we 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 heard a very short Sheldon Keefe after the game Saturday night regarding Willie. William said that the turning point was his not back checking on the, the Samar goal. How, how frustrating is that to see that as a coach? And is that why you kind of jump the lines after a little bit? It's tough. It's tough. You know, it's like I said, we, I mean, defensively, it's, I don't know if we can play much better than that, you know, uh, in terms of how we can, how we control play, you know, how we control the neutral zone, not a whole lot happening. And that's a tough one to give up, but to me, that was the third or fourth um, play like that for a while. And that's why I thought it was, it was time, but obviously it's, things have been piling up for that line for a while, so it was overdue. Where are you at with him in general for the last month or so? Like, are you satisfied with the play? No, no, not close. Is it defensively? Is it just scoring? So I'm, I'm not even going to answer the questions. I mean, I don't need to pile on Will here. He, he knows what he knows what makes him great, and he knows what he needs to get back to. I like that. Don't need to pile on. Don't have to. Beat it out of you uh, through the media. Really like that answer by Sheldon. Yeah, and you're right. It's it's about perfect because it doesn't excuse Willie, but at the same time, yeah, it doesn't really go at him. You know, I I compared it uh, last night the relationship. Like I was with the Marlies when Willie and Sheldon were there and saw the start of this. That goes back to 2015. It's 2022. These guys have been together a long time, and I think Sheldon is kind of like it's like you you know you have teenagers. I'm sure. You can't yell at them all the time for everything. You kind of have to pick your spots. And it feels like Sheldon is trying to find his spots with Willie, and it just got to a point where it's like, okay, I need to give him another, you know, elbow in the ribs here. (laughs) Do we? I didn't hear that. Can you guys hold on for one second? Yeah, of course. Theo, get up off the floor, stop playing with a dog, and go to school. (laughs) Oh, yeah. What is that from? Oh, my God. What is that? Oh, from a, that, a, a past morning show. That's That was my morning hits. Can I hear that one more time? Can you guys hold on for one second? Yeah, of course. Theo, get up off the floor, stop playing with a dog, and go to school. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Don't you guys have uh, deleted or erased? Uh, oh my! I used to do these hits with the. Uh, uh, I've been holding on to that since November. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one. I used to do hits and forget yeah. to take the garbage out, and I'd watch the truck out the oh. window, and I'd I'd go chase the garbage truck and still do my hit. <laughs> it's like the movie Nobody. It that was I watched the other just day. a. So there you go. That's I'm how you done. parent. Yes. At some point, That's how you, you have coach. to tell them, we need you to get off your ass and go hit someone on the floor check and turn a puck over. For the love <laughs> of God. Yes. The, the only thing, uh, again, Sheldon, good good through the media, not rehashing everything, but yeah. he's he's short with them now. And he's like, this has gone on too long. With Willie or the yes, media? Yes, with Willie. Okay. And uh, it's gone on this long is because you've waited this long. Yeah, you think it should have been sooner? Oh, my God, three months. I know, it's been bad for a long time. Three months. So let me make the case from people who aren't on this show, because you, Sammy, and I feel the same about Willie, which is very, very good when he's engaged, frustrating because you know he's not engaged enough. I've had this conversation off the air with several people, and people are like, what do you want? He's got 60 points. He's going to finish the year with 30 goals and 70 points. You know, like, what What do you want from yeah. this guy? That's what people are saying that aren't on yeah, this show. It, but it's wrong. It's just wrong. And if you want to look at the game sheet, that's fine. But it's it's when you're not scoring and you don't influence the game mm-hmm. is when your team runs the risk of, of losing more often than you win and losing in the first round. Yeah, It's just not about the points. It's about the gaps between the points. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. Ben Sherratt, like, listen to him talk about beating the Leafs. You, you, you hit hard in game one, two, and three so they can pay off in five, six, and seven. Right. You wear your opponents down. You grind them. 
it's it's the process. You want to just focus on your points and, and, and stats? Then you disrespect the process of trying to win. Mm-hmm. And that's where Willie has been lost for the last three months. And this is where it has to be addressed. Yeah. And it should have been addressed a while ago. Whether it's being demoted to the third or fourth line or make him a healthy scratch. Like, mm-hmm. take him out of your lineup. I don't know. Does it embarrass Kyle? Does it embarrass Brendan Shannon? Does it embarrass No, he's Sheldon? in the middle of a contract. You could do so, it. You could do it, no problem. Do it. Well, what do you, where do you think he fits on the team? Because He has to fit. Because he doesn't fit. On with, the second line. But it, it's how long do we have to keep watching it? It just doesn't work, boys. I got I got two things I want to say on Willie, and then I'll address I, your question. Well, I just have a, I have a stat here okay. from Luke Fox that he tweeted on the weekend. When John Tavares and William Nylander are on the ice together at even strength, the Maple Leafs have been outscored 45 to 36. When neither Tavares or Nylander are on the ice at even strength, the Maple Leafs are outscoring opponents 109 to 89. Yeah, two of them are a drag to their overall results when they're on the ice together. So my two Willie things that I will say. I think he suffers uh, perception-wise because we talk about the big four, right? The big four stars that they have, that's the whole salary cap. That's the plan. The other guys make $12, $11, $11 million. Willie makes six nine. He makes seven. So he makes $4 million less. So it's really the big three, and Willie's the middle class, and then there's everyone else. So I think we put him up with those guys in terms of expectations. The other thing is that I think the way he plays, because he's a little smoother, right? He's a great skater. Everything's very fluid. When he doesn't get points... When he's doesn't, gone, he's gone, right? It, it does. You can't really... It just looks like he's not caring or he's going through the motions because he's naturally smooth. If he's a bad skater, I think we'd be like, oh, he's going pretty hard, but he's just such a natural skater. I think that hurts him too. Yeah, but, no, I yeah, I don't care what he looks like skating. He's no. not competing. He doesn't fight for pucks. Remember at the start of the year, he was winning puck battles all over the rink. stripping people of pucks. And we were like, he's found it. This is the guy we wanted. Play... He's not a light kid either. He's, no, he's a strong, strong kid. He's a he's strong kid. Strong. He, he, he needs to watch Pasternak and just say, can I just be 20% of that, but 25% of that? Do you, but does he care like Pasternak? I, and I'm just saying, like, I, I don't think he doesn't know what to do. I think some nights he's just like, I What just, if the answer is no, he doesn't care? And I don't know. <laughs> well, I think he cares. Go, he's going you know, to score 30 and 70. He he's, was great in playoffs last year. I think you just go He's well, been good in big games for the is. Leafs. Like, he really you know, has. No, he had a good playoff run last year. His oh points per game God, are worse. I know, but I'm saying they're worse in the postseason than the regular season. We're playing it's now. A, it's now. Play, it's now a, what have you done for me lately now? It's, it's, a, it's not a, yeah. It wasn't a playoff run, by the way. Right. He, he did. He had a good series. Yeah. And actually, he scored in the first four games, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure that he was incredible. Like, he's had he's had big games for the Leafs. In good games, in big games. I just, it hasn't been nearly good enough. And Keith, and you're watching, like, I watched the clip of him talking about Nylander for when I was recording it for the show, and you could just see it in his face when he's talking about it. Like, he's just, it's going, it's like. He's trying not to say. He's short-circuiting. He's like, what do I say? What do I don't say here? Like, I'm trying not to bury the guy. But, man, and then he turned one over last night. Like, he was better last night playing on the third line, but yeah. just turned one over in the slot, led to a goal. It's just. Before we go to, to break, Sammy, do you yeah. want to hear uh, Willie on being demoted? Do we yeah. want to hear that? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I had a mistake there on the back check. Did a back check all the way on uh, Savard. I think that was a 2-1 goal. I think that's a, a big factor. I mean, we gotta, or I got to be there to, uh, to stop that and stop their momentum after they scored that first goal. I think it's deeper than just that play well and sheldon said himself he's like it's not just that play it's three or four times in the game there's moments like that that don't cost you a goal but they don't stand out because they didn't go in the net so all right we got to go to break or are we yeah. gonna yeah we, we go didn't get into the fourth line either no we can get into we that. got lots more to go lots to go here gord stellick after the break co-host of leaf nation pre and post game former leaf gm We'll have some thoughts on the fourth line. Mm-hmm. You're listening to Real Kipper and Born, show number 120.
Wheel, Kipper, and Board on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. Good break. Have to catch our breath. Yeah. Take a deep breath. You know, we really did miss a chance to break down the Pennsylvania car crash video. Okay. <laughs> that was unbelievable. That that fella didn't now, die. We're not encouraging everybody no. on YouTube to uh, to ditch our show for the uh, that treacherous uh, car accident pile up on Highway I'll 81. I'll drop I'll drop the link in the chat. Oh, my gosh. That was something Terrifying. to be seen. A lot more than the 18-wheeler hey. Brian Burke was talking about with the Leafs. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's for sure. Justin Hall got belted a few times last night. Was... Also not a great game, Justin Hall. I thought belted. that was a uh, – he's been good for he, he a took month a hit to make the me. play on the Marner to Mikheyev goal uh, through the middle, but man, he, did. He, got, he got hit hard a lot yeah. last night. Was... Well, let's bring in uh, Stelectricity. Gord Stella, co-host of Leaf Nation, uh, joins us now. And uh, – Gordo, you want to pick up on that? Uh, your overall thoughts of uh, the weekend and Chris Rock? I don't know. <laughs> I was uh, well. I, I didn't know if Sam had a if it, Sam. If you got a pool going May seventeenth, four thirty p.m., that's when Justin finally loses it and slaps Kipper. Okay, I got that in the pool, okay. So uh, put that down. I know if I slap going. Kipper, it's not ending the same way with him just taking it and carrying on with the show. I know there's a different outcome there. Oh, if anything wasn't on TV, there'd be a different ending anyway. I'll, uh, yeah, that 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 was certainly to uh, finish up hockey and and catch up on that. I mean, so many different things that happened. And uh, first, uh, enjoy always enjoy listening. Uh, Kipper's morning show memories, Justin. You never knew what was going on in the Kipper household. He was. One time, I think he tried connecting on his Sports Illustrated football telephone because his cell phone <laughs> was down. So, you know, the one you get free for yeah. a subscription. I'm not, <laughs> and, I'm not and, dating ourselves, but it was you, Landry. Like, what was uh, yeah, the Jeff garbage Sam truck? You remember the garbage truck? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then, and then Jeff Salmon and Don Landy would call you, and you, you and you, uh, you and your wife would do uh, a parody sometimes on things about like how big my head was, and uh, I don't know all that stuff. And she was yeah, always you know, great. <laughs> I, so. I once forgot to hang up the phone off my interview, oh, that's right. yeah. and they 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 stayed on it and listened to our conversation. That's terrible, yes. Gord. Who was yes, your producer? So that was uh, no with little and of course Anne Marie and, and and so then they did fake ones after that they were so anyway <laughs> it was uh, it was all in fun and uh, and and just you know picking up like you know last night there's one play uh, okay Justin Hall also the referees man they 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 I mean the guys tried to skate back to the pedal to the players bench after one penalty against that 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 phantom interference call but William Nylander made a play last night and we all know what happened that you know and you guys were talking about it Sheldon mm -hmm. Keefe. Mention it publicly, holding it in, mention it publicly, and there's that obvious goal Saturday, just a little, pay the price a little bit more defensively, and it's a simple, you know, one where you should be on the player. And here he gets demoted, whatever the word may be. Demoted's a good word, though. And he makes that play where he cuts right across in front of his net with the puck last night. Now, he got away with it. It's like telling your kid, telling Theo, instead of playing, don't walk through the wet paint, don't walk through the wet paint. Well, he walks through the wet paint. For some reason, there's there's no stain on it. There's no footprints. Like like he he got away with it last night. So I mean, it's just funny. That's that's William Nylander's DNA, and a lot of reason. That's a reason for William Nylander's success. Uh, but also, it's whatever year number. There's that frustration you talk about. And it's different than the Jake DeBrus situation. You know, in Boston, William Nylander's a, a better player than Jake DeBrusque. But in some ways, what happened there, you know. Um, maybe isn't a bad idea to look at, as you guys mentioned, emulating to some degree. Yeah, the, it was interesting. He makes that play at the start of the second period. He only played three minutes roughly in the first, and then he played seven or something after that turnover. So we talk about accountability, and I was like, wait, he's just back in the good books. It doesn't seem to matter. What did you think of uh, Mikheyev getting a, a look on the second line? Um, is that something they might do more permanently, you think? I liked it. Yep. I liked it. You know, and... Um, uh, and, and again, 
Sheldon Keefe can't look forward about contract years, but you still have Nylander at, at not a bad amount. It's actually not a bad contract. Now, you're probably going to lose Mikheyev because you can't qualify him. I don't know, unless there's something else they can work out. But that's not what Sheldon Keefe is thinking about uh, on the bench. And this is exactly, Justin, what they need. They need that other player. I mean, I, I'm, I use Gary Roberts, Darcy Tucker. I've used Gary Volk even, just that Gary Volk had a strong playoff that one year way back when. Like, these, it's okay. The big line hasn't done it the last couple of years, but nobody else have you been. Actually, Nylander's had as good a playoff as anybody, but nobody else have you said, geez, yeah, but, but so-and-so came up. And, you know, Kippy, your, your Ranger team's a great example about that, that it wasn't always Mark Messier. You needed him, but it was someone else that did it. And I just, Mikheyev, he, he no longer is the guy that misses all those breakaways all the time. You know, he's the he's guy now putting him in, and you could just see that kind of confidence. So, Justin, I... I think I think everything's on the table. I, I think it's not like you're just gonna, you know, draw draw a lineup from a hat or anything like that, but you've got you've got this comfort zone that you can try all these things out and be absolutely sure of what you can you feel you can deploy successfully and can't when it comes playoffs when I'm talking about Sheldon Keefe. Yeah, you're right. No Stanley Cup in New York without Stefan Mateau and two double overtime yeah. goals. So that's your Engval. That's your yes. Mikheyev. Sure. Right there Absolutely. in a nutshell. Um, you know, last night watching, uh, again, the telecast, I think, uh, Justin, it was you that said that uh, uh, Tavares took a hit off of Robert Hag. Yeah. That uh, maybe kind of shook him up a little bit or a little bit of a wake-up call to get him going. Uh, is, is that the way you see it, Gord? Or would there would that have been another instance where, you know, you're hoping there's a, a, a Will Smith in the lineup? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did like the feistiness, you know, last night, even though they lost, I mean, that Florida team is impressive. Uh, you know, you look at, you, you know, uh, Lomberg went after Wayne Simmons, the first shifts. He's got his, all his family there and that, you know, and I, I like that they're feisty physical and they have depth because that's exactly what the mate, uh, the Maple Leafs need to have as an opponent to prepare them for the playoffs. So I, I, you know, John Tavares, and we've talked about it a few times, Kipper and, and, and Justin is like, he's the sacred cow that, and deservedly so that you don't you don't criticize, but because of the decision he made to come over, and, and but yet that one two punch that wasn't happening, and everyone had to be accountable. And is he just snake bit and not getting the offense? Because he's not the flashy skater. He does all those other things great, and he's such a great competitor, and and uh, does you know all all the greasy area, all those kind of things. But it wasn't happening. It just wasn't happening for him. And for that line. So if it takes getting hit and he's, you know, he he's had a little more, a little bit more edge as well, because he is like a lady Bing trophy, the way he respects officials and, you know, handles things. And so I've liked it that he's got a little bit ornery. And, you know, I don't know, does that make the difference that he puts a couple in? One's a great pass from Mitch Marner on the power play. That was the the highlight reel assist. But, you know, maybe this just might get him going. Maybe that, you know, whatever it is, like like every other player that you get a couple of breaks and all of a sudden you get somewhere close to what he was doing when he scored those 47 goals, which so many of them, so many of them were with Mitch Marner, but there's only mm -hmm. one Mitch Marner to go around. Gord, we're uh, delighted to have you because we didn't get through near all of our Leafs topics today because we spent uh, 20 minutes talking about the Raptors, the World Cup, Will Smith. So uh, <laughs> we haven't talked about Mark Giordano at all yet, who, you know, he's looked really solid. I think he's done great for Timothy Lilligren's game. Um, but Gio last night, he's out there in the dying minutes of the game. Like, this guy has immediately become a pretty important part of, uh, of that back end, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and you can't make a... You can't make a decision after a few games like you know, but it, there's two guys last year. Now, Nick Foligno, the fact he had a quarantine and then, then, then never was healthy, he never was a fit. Like, you know, you were just saying, oh, yeah, well, he's good. No, he just never was, was a fit in his brief time here. Uh, David Clarkson, the first time he hit the ice, I said, who is this guy? This isn't the guy I saw play for New Jersey. You know, mm -hmm. he had that 10-game suspension that, you know, whatever. So just getting off on the wrong foot quite often, and particularly in a, in a short-term trade deadline deal, can be problematic. So I've loved his steadiness, you know, particularly with Sandine being, you know, hurt as well that they needed him. And I, I, I you're 100%. Like, he's just the kind of guy you, you, you knew when – I, I, I think I was mentioning it to you guys when the Seattle Kraken were in town, 
I never saw more friends and family waiting for an individual or peer. And anyway, that's all I could see from doing the postgame show than Giordano. All those 55 Seattle Kraken jerseys, and he was getting selfies taken with all these people. And so, you know, he loves being here. It's his hometown. The The guy's won the Norris Trophy. He's a veteran, and he's smart. And, yeah, and he's helped him. He's helped him. There's, uh, there's that... There's that instant understanding, and I've liked Labushkin as well. You know, I've, there, he's he is meat and potatoes, and we made the Roman Polak type comparison. Mark Giordano's at a, at a different level, and, and and they needed that kind of player. That was a great pickup. It, stability. I, I think the one thing that I've I've watched this team from day one is that when they're when they're going, I I've said that they're one of the best four checking teams in the league, and I, I think that that's true uh, when you when you look at. Uh, I think from game one to now a little over uh, 60, 60 games. Um, but there is a tendency to play too fast. And it's it's just about the timing of the game. It's not something you can definitely get there too early. And I think that's been the case for, for a lot of these teams. But, you know, Gio and Labushkin now have that calming influence where they can actually slow things down for these guys you know, it, it's, it's, it's a great point because you think speed, speed kills. And it's funny, Matt Martin's another guy that never really found a fit here. And one thing on, his fourth line was too fast. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he just, they needed his toughness and the other things that he's done so successfully with the Islanders uh, twice. And it was almost like, it, it was which was great offensively because we saw that, we saw that Saturday night in Montreal when they were in the Montreal zone. Oh my goodness, killing it, great goaltending. But yes, on the other side, when they came back, it's that whole defensive and that defensive style, that buy-in as a team, and that maybe they don't, maybe they don't fully have the buy-in. But maybe to your point, Kippy, the understanding about someone that can just as fast as you were in the other team's offensive zone, we're going to be able to slow it down a bit as they come our way. Yeah, that's, that'd be a good thing. Speaking of slowing it down, you know, we are kicking around this whole fourth line thing, Spezza and Simmons. I mean neither guy has been productive in some time this season and it's hard to see a world in the playoffs where they're going to be productive putting blackwell with them has not helped i've liked blackwell fine but they still uh, i don't know they're not overly inspiring you know what what are your thoughts on what to do with the fourth line like is there a way to make this a contributing unit to the leafs yeah, it's a it's a it's a tough one because so much respect for those two individuals that and, sure. and des- deservedly so. Uh, but it, you, you know, you, and you saw they were really hemmed in by the Florida Florida fourth line. I, I mean, maybe it's something as well when you hit the playoffs that they they've got their their mojo back or what have you. But this, and th- but this is exactly the kind of thing that Sheldon Keefe is looking at about the different ingredients there. Like, I mean, Kyle Clifford is such a bonehead play on that one play the other game, but still he's an ingredient. Nick Robertson there. They're all ingredients, and you know, I, I I keep going back to the when the Blues went all the way. They had twelve forward spots, but fifteen different forwards, and and there seemed to be Craig Bruby had an ability to kind of put a Wayne Simmons type in for a game or two, the right game, you know, when they needed that, or and a Nick Robertson in for a game or two. I mean, that's the way I see it. There's there's no. Like last year with Joe Thornton, they got kind of stuck. So they, they you know, out of his respect for him, I, w- I don't know how many promises were made, but certainly an understanding was made. And, and you got, you know, you got trapped about playing him more than you should have, giving him more power to power play time that really he wasn't up to. And I think it's understood that's not going to happen now. Uh, I'm, I'm big on both these guys. Like, like Spatza too, but the way he's filled in when things have gone a little bit of south, we always think of him dropping the gloves uh, in the Columbus series, but I mean, we, you can only you can that's that that's a memory. You can't use that as why why you would play him more in 2022. But uh, and and Simmons, there's that there's that physicality part. But yes, in both cases, there's shortcomings. There's no there's no doubt about it. And, and uh, maybe in the playoffs, their experience eradicates some of those shortcomings for them, smarts and that. But it certainly is something you got to be aware of. And you can't, uh, there's, there's no such thing as noses being out of joint. The Florida Panthers, did they push hard enough that you could definitely think that that last night, uh, w- that win was maybe a, a signature kind of win for the Leafs? Or do you have to wait to see if it's followed up against the Boston Bruins tomorrow night? You know, you know, Kippy, like you've played in Toronto and New York, and in New York, it's intense, but not like Toronto. And, and that's what's great about Toronto. So it's 182nd of a season. 
and you can't get too high and you can't get too low. And you got to just ignore the white noise, which includes us, but also appreciate the white noise because that's why you have the highest ticket prices in the league. And that's why you get your butt kissed if you win one playoff <laughs> round. And, you know, you know, oh, you, you know, it's phenomenal. You do, you do get recognized places. But anyway, so so beyond all that, I so I, I thought I wasn't saying you had to do a statement game after Montreal. They hadn't played these guys in two years. Like when COVID hit two years ago, they were battling this team, and mostly fans didn't even realize that. When you divided your season tickets up, if you're part of a cartel at the start of the year, the Panther games went last, even that year. You know, people just, and then all of a sudden you're saying, no, you know what, this Panther team, they're going to be a reality. And then COVID hit, and you didn't get those games. And here two years later, you're finally getting what, you know, could could be the uh, could be the best two teams, uh, best two young teams in the Atlantic Division. This could be their best rivalry moving forward for the next three four years. So I just take it as one game. I'm really thinking Kippy and Justin, the Calgary Flames in the West and Florida in the East. Like Florida is the least of three years ago, but maybe are they going to seize the window of opportunity now? Like I don't know. Like do they get on that St. Louis Blues juggernaut that all of a sudden now? And same with Calgary in the West. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great point. The um the one thing we know with this Leafs team uh, is that pff, nothing matters if they don't get goaltending coming up, and they got a performance from Peter Mrazek last night that made you ra- raise your eyebrows a bit. Do, do you have any hope this guy could find a form that could make him usable again? Well, Justin, I'm just at the age now where I clip my eyebrows, but anyway, yeah, I think <laughs> okay. that's uh, that's fair. I uh, I with hedge clippers how, <laughs> pruning shears why would i get why would i throw kippy a softball like that why would i do that why would i do that uh, it uh how okay three stars who cares but how could he not be one of the three stars like like seriously was he not like, no oh, like I'll pick him last night <laughs> yeah. no like, I'm thinking, for all three like like as if he thinks he's having a hard time fitting in in Toronto. Then they then they kind of grind him on it last night when he was far and away Tough. one of the three stars. So he didn't get to hug Carlton the Bear. So uh, he'll get on with it. Uh, yeah, goaltending goal. Like 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 I I was talking about it earlier that Peter Morazic is your reality. It's it's your kid's teacher that the kid is struggling with and you can't get a change. And then you hope it gets figured out that the kid, you know, they work it out. The the teacher's more sensitive to the kid. The kids uh, understands things more, gets it, works harder and pulls off like uh, what Kippy and I were happy with a C plus probably you, Justin would be a B plus, but anyway, and we (laughs) move on and that that's, he, he may be your guy. Like, I don't like hearing Jack, like last, last year, Freddie got, never got enough time to get healthy and get enough games in. And I, I know they say Jack's around the corner. I don't, but anyway, uh, yeah. And right now uh, of those Atlantic division teams, the Maple Leafs have the most up in the air goaltending. And that is a worry, but when the pucks drop game number 83, it just takes one of them to get hot. One more for you, Gord, before we let you go, are, are you as petrified as our Sammy McKee is to uh, a Boston Bruin, Toronto Maple Leaf first round. Okay, like, have you not learned about Sam? Was he not the guy? Hey, remember that, Justin, when I was filling in and Sammy had, what was he going to give Campbell six years at $26 million a year or something? <laughs> That's right. Remember That's that? Enough. You got to sign yeah. him now. Yeah, yeah. He got, so, no. Yeah, hey, hey, it was, it was set up. It was set up the last two years. Leaf fans go, oh, this is the best playoff opponent you can get. No. When you start thinking that way, that's what that's when you get kicked in the butt. So I don't care. Bring it on whoever it is and just go out and beat them. And if you beat them, who knows, like the shackles are off and maybe maybe the Toronto Maple Police become what I just described, the Florida Panthers and Calgary Flames, that all of a sudden with that huge sigh of relief that they go on the roll. So I don't care. Whoever you play, bring it on. Don't think about it. Heavy eyebrows. Shaved back, you do it all for us, Gord. <laughs> well, I can't reach my back anymore, but I'll take your word for it. I think it seems pretty smooth in the mirror. So, <laughs> thanks, Gord. Appreciate see your you, time, man. Gord. Okay, see you, Justin. See you, Kippy. Gord Stella, co-host of Leaf Nation, pre and post game with the, Sammy McKee. He, he's right. It doesn't matter. The, no, the he's, Leafs' record. Well, it does matter. And the Bruins' record. Lose. Wow. <laughs> I mean, they could lose to any of these teams, but yeah. it would hurt more. With the Bruins? Yes. Yeah. Come on, Sammy. Leafs in Boston, the record, 65 games played each, 41 wins, 19 losses, five ties, 87 points. Dead even, dead heat through 65 games. Leafs have two more regulation wins, so if they tie, the Leafs will uh, be seated ahead of the Bruins. But it's tight. Boy. Sammy, who won uh, 
Do you remember the guy's name that won our, our, our tickets to uh, oh, Montreal? Poor Robbie. And you called it. Yeah. You we said. owe Robbie a pint or something. And the worst part is I, I watched the uh, the game on Saturday night with uh, shirtless wonder J.D. Bunkus, and we were discussing the um, the feeling of being in that building and how I don't even know. It's too soon. Even if you beat them, right? Like we said a guy, there was a contest. It's great. But even if you're a Leaf fan in that building, you're expecting – you, they're expecting you to win. You know, the fan, the Habs fans are going into that game expecting to lose, right? And then they get the unexpected win, plus they have the playoff stuff over you. It's a bad Saturday night in La Belle Provence for a Leaf fan. Allen was good, though. Who's that, Allen? Jake, Jake Allen. Allen. Oh, Jake Allen was very good, yeah. They hit him in the chest a lot. Like, how many chest how many 10 ballers did he... The one 10 baller that he had on, on Marner with the stick yeah. sort of paddle... or. Uh, blocker combo was great, but I really thought they didn't have a ton of really good chances. They I just mean, hit they had the 50 shots, lot. Sammy. I think yeah. You said yourself, you're not going to pretend like the Leafs they didn't played, they played kick awesome. their butt all night. They played yeah. awesome, and then a blatant trip that led to the, the go-ahead goal, and away you went. Do you want to give away tickets now, or are we done? No, we th- buddy, we're never done. All we do is give away tickets all on right. the show. So, rip. Uh, this is for, we're giving away tickets to the April 9th game against the aforementioned Montreal Canadiens. All you got to do is download Friday, Monday, and Tuesday episodes of Real Kipper and Born and listen for the different code words that have been placed in the podcast. Then text each code word to 59590 and you'll be entered for a chance to win. Each code word counts as an entry and the winner will be selected on Wednesday, boys. And if you go to that game and the Leafs lose, you don't have to sit in a train on the way home. No, you can do Well, maybe, maybe the subway. Yeah. The TTC. <laughs> Right. All right. On that note, we'll take a quick break. Ed Jovanoski, former NHL defenseman, 1,128 games, boys. That's a Whew. heck of a career. He is currently uh, the Panthers TV analyst for Bali Sports. Let's get his thoughts on last night and where this East division shapes up. More of Real Kipper and Born after the break. You're listening to us. <laughs> on Sportsnet 590, <laughs> the fan.
From the City News 680 Traffic Center, I'm Carrie Pronskis. Eastbound on the 401 just before Dixon, the two seconds. This is Real Kipper and Board on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. Happy to bring in Ed Jovanovski now, former NHL defenseman and Panthers TV analyst. Uh, Jovo, thanks for joining us, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Sorry, a little bit of a hectic day getting the kids and <laughs> you know that you, you know that drill oh yeah you know? yeah for so, sure um yeah but everything's good thank you are you uh are you traveling or are you uh, any travel at all or are you just in studio stuff i'm just in studio and at home you know i don't have the um just doing the two guys on the road with uh moeller and goldstein and um yeah just enjoying the uh well, back home, it's been a fun year to cover them, definitely at home. You know, I've been a pretty electric team there. Yeah, exciting year to cover them. Obviously, a ton of talent. They score goals at a, a crazy clip. Uh, how, how do you feel they're, they're built for the playoffs? You like the way they stack up against a pretty competitive Atlantic division? Well, I, 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 I got to believe so. And I, I, the only reason I say that right now is just because they're finding a way, you know, to score goals. I know yesterday, only getting a couple... Uh, but but certainly come playoff time, they got to find ways. And hopefully leading up to the playoffs, they're in games where they're tight and they find a way to, you know, to win the game playing well defensively. But there's no shortage of offense. You know, when there's a their key power play or they need a goal, they all seem to be sniffing in that area and finding a way to get it done. But But certainly, as we all know, come playoff time, your star players are checked a little bit harder. The, the ice becomes a little bit limited out there. And um, it's a little bit tougher, but the depth is something that this team has. And you shut down a couple lines, you know, their third line can get it done. So, you know, it all needs to come together. But, but certainly, I think defensively, you know, things need to tighten up a little bit. I want to get your thoughts on last night's game on, on what the Leafs saw out of Florida. Uh, we know that they were coming off of a lengthy road trip. I know there was a, a home stance uh, between them. But nonetheless, uh, what did you see last night? Did they did the Leafs come close to seeing how good Florida could be? Well, I think in spurts, I think we all saw, you know, when Florida really kind of, they're really a puck possession team, which a lot of the NHL tries to, to be like nowadays. And, um, you know, when they do possess the puck, they're very tough to, you know, tough to defend. Uh, yesterday, I thought the team was a little bit disconnected, you know, from the defense to the forwards. Um, you know, I thought Toronto had a little bit more jump. Maybe it's, you know, they both are on back-to-back nights. Um, 
you know, but overall, I, I think when it comes, you know, that Toronto is a good team and the whole Atlantic division, you know, it could be, you know, whoever pick your poison, I think in a lot of certain areas, but I, I thought yesterday, um, you know, they just didn't have it at certain times and in key times. And then, you know, your special teams, as we all know, is a huge part, um, you know, and you give up a couple of those and, and you don't cash in on yours. It could be the difference at the end of the game. But I thought Toronto yesterday, for the most part, was the better team. Um, but overall, I think we've seen them a couple more times here. It's amazing. It's the first time we saw them. Yeah. You know, so it's good to kind of get them, you know, started and, and know what you're going to be up against. Jovo, this season, uh, Aaron Ekblad seems like he's become one of the best defensemen in the NHL, obviously a crucial part of what they've built down there. Um, what are your thoughts on how that lineup looks without him? And, and just your thoughts of him coming back. I think it's with six weeks and a high ankle sprain. That's a, a fairly tight timeline. Yeah, and we all know, like, the, I was always told, you know, a doctor told me one time, but sometimes it's better to break your ankle rather than the high ankle sprain. I, yeah. I, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, sometimes – you know, with all the ligaments in there, you don't know how this is going to unfold. I spoke with him actually yesterday, finding out how he's doing. He's making great progress. I think he's going to get his skate, uh, his foot in the boot here coming up soon. So hopefully, you know, the team can get him, you know, skating before and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, get in some games before the playoffs because it's not as easy as flipping that switch, especially with the intensity in the playoffs. But this team is a different group with Aaron Eckblad in the lineup. Let's not kid ourselves. He's a minute muncher. He's had an exceptional year. And over the years, his game has just evolved. And, you, and, you know, this year, he's definitely been in that Norris conversation. I know Makar and, and Yossi are, you know, the one-two, but he's definitely in that conversation. It was unfortunate to see him go down, especially back-to-back years kind of, you know, at that time. But he's a, he's a huge part of the team, and hopefully have him back. Um, how they stack up without him, I think, you know, the acquisition – of Hag and, and uh, Sherrod. Sherrod's a horse, a big man. He can log a lot of minutes. Had an excellent playoff last year. So I think in the meantime, him playing with Rieger is going to kind of fill that void. But certainly uh, the team is hoping and, and everybody's praying that uh, we get Aaron Eckblad back. We're speaking with former NHL defenseman Ed Jovanoski, now present uh, Panthers TV analyst. Uh, when it comes to the goaltending of Spencer Knight and goalie Bob Bobrovsky, are Panther fans as, say, nervous as Leaf fans have been the last, uh, what, uh, three, four weeks here in Toronto with their goaltending? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think, you know, look at the, you know, Kipper, you know, the markets are different. So, you know, you, you get the conversation of, you know, for this team to have success, you know, their goaltending needs to be the old Bob. And, and we've seen that this year. He's been, he's been excellent. Um, but yeah, this team, I think like any team, I think it's going to go as far as the goaltender performs in your team defense. And it's not always hinging on the goaltending. Most of it is you need that big save and you need to find a win those low, low scoring games. But, um, yeah, we're, we're hoping that, you know, he, uh, you know, he continues to play solid and, and his confidence is there. And I, and I think this year he's made, you know, great strides. It's always tough coming in a new situation. It's been a few years now for him. I, I think he's a lot more comfortable with the system. I think the defense is definitely shored up a little bit. We're not giving up those great eight chances. Now, mind you, you know, the team can play a little loose because they're, you know, sometimes they have that two, three, four goal lead and things tend to loosen up and, and you're giving teams some other chances. But come to playoff time, I, I think they're comfortable with both, to tell you the truth. I think, you know, Knight's been kind of running here a little bit. You can see his improvement kind of as this year went along. He went down to the minors for a little bit. He's had a little bit of the bulk of, of the action now. He's played well. He's young, right? I mean, it's always tough to throw, you know, kid into the fire. But I think if anything goes a little bit sideways, I don't think they're, they're one bit hesitant or Bruno is, to, you know, to throw, to throw Spencer into the net. You know, one thing that stands out for, for me is just, you know, can, when I look at Florida and Toronto is Florida has this physical element, the number of guys who really are able to bring that edge. Um, you know, it, how much of their identity is that? I guess I was just fixated on Radko Gudis being involved in every physical moment last night. But is that a part of, uh, you know, the way that this team wants to play? 
I, I think so. I think so. And and when you look at this team kind of in the past, it was something that was been lacking. You know, guys taking liberties in front of the net. You don't have those bodies. Now you got, you know, you got Sherrod, who's a 230-pound guy. You got Gudis, who never really pays attention to the puck unless he has it on a stick. He's looking <laughs> to kind of move guys around and hit and hit guys. And, and you kind of go up and down the lineup. Sam Bennett, what a great acquisition that was. He's a typical playoff guy where he gets in hard on the forecheck. Even guys like who's not familiar with that physical part of the game. You watch Huberto now. You know, he's getting into it because he's getting that spe- little bit more attention, obviously. So he's kind of battling back and having that physical element. But, you know, Lomberg and he kind of, you know, Marchman as well. So you got some bigger bodies, you know, up front that get in hard on, on the forecheck and try to separate, you know, the puck. And, um, you know, I think up and down the lineup, I think they're well balanced in that area. But uh, as we know, you know, the top line is is a puck possession team and they really have the puck and with the acquisition of Giroux, you know, that line can be really dangerous. You mentioned uh, Bruno, the head coach, uh, Andrew Burnett. It's uh, just just speak a little bit to the evolution of uh, of his coaching career and uh, and now trying to take a team that everybody believes should be contending for a Stanley Cup. And you've played enough playoff games to know what coaching means this time of year with line matchups and motivation and pushing the right bus- buttons, making the key decisions. Uh, is is Bruno ready for this? I, I believe so. You know, when I, when this first kind of came down, the whole unfortunate incident, you know, with the coaching change and how all that unfolded, I ran into him and he's like, Jova, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> you, know, but you, talk to him, you, you know, you talk to him now and, and you can see how calm he is on the bench, almost like how he played, right? He's really kind of mm-hmm. that calm player, just kind of got it done. And, you know, he's got the players, you know, respect. And I think they really look to him on, in key areas to, you know, to find the right solution. But I, I think for him, he's played enough playoff games He's been around solid coaching staff throughout his career. So I, I think now he's surrounded himself with some very, you know, smart guys that are with him behind the bench. And and I think, um, you know, as you go along this, you go along this, to, you know, together as a group. You know, I think there's going to be some trying times. There's going to be some adversity. How the team responds to it, you know, hinges a little bit, you know, on the coaching staff and they can do all the preparation they want. But at the end of the day, I think the players, recognize the position that they're in they kind of been there you know the last couple of years kind of teetering and, and they got a good taste of it last year you know with tampa being close so i think kind of taking the next step and with the coaches and all the players buying in kind of hoping that this is the year for them yeah, and Joe, well, there'd been times when Florida uh, and the fan reception had not been, you know, amazing. And there are times when the fans there are great. How, are they excited right now that this team is a, a few points out of a president's trophy spot right now, as good as they are with the chances they have? Is there a little bit of a buzz in Florida for this team now? There is. And it's exciting. I got Montreal here here tomorrow. The team hasn't been on home ice for a few weeks. So, right. I mean, it's... Um, you know, they had the trip and they came back, but they didn't play any games and they went back out for a few in, in Canada. So, yeah, I think the buzz is there. I think, you know, we all know this market is is kind of what's hot at the time and the Panthers are hot right now. So it's definitely, uh, you know, a ticket that everyone talks about when they're at home. So, you know, the playoffs always had success. You know, when when the team's in the playoffs, you, you know, you get the fans here. But as as we move along this last little push, um, a lot of it's been talked about, you know, on the papers and on the radio and, and what have you. So everyone's excited, you know, for this group to do well. And, and you hear it in the players' voices, too. They're in, they're in a position here where the team, the team management recognize that this team is close. And to have that confidence, you know, from upstairs to go out and make these moves to say, hey, guys, we're going to reward you with a couple top-end players, you know, to make this push makes everyone feel better and the fans obviously recognize that as well well the good news for everybody is the Leafs head down uh, south uh, a week tomorrow we get to watch both these clubs do it all over again hey Jovo really appreciate your time man thanks for doing this all right guys anytime thanks hey Jovanoski now doing uh, color for TV uh, for for the Panthers on Bally Sports
You know, I, I sometimes get the sense that there are concerns with Florida that are leaf-like in terms of, like, defensive play. 10-7 every night if they play in the first round. Yeah, you know, like, uh, Huberto is amazing, but it can, can go score. both ways, yeah. And questionable goaltending. Yeah. And keeping the uh, keeping the puck uh, out of their own zone. I, I didn't. Mirrors. Didn't love that decor. For them, I, for minus them, Ekblad, night. they're they're a different looking group without Ekblad. Ekblad and Didn't, Jovo talked about it. You yeah. don't know, like I what I'll tell you what I do know for sure, that this thing has got no chance, and I'm talking about his ankle, mm. of feeling remotely normal until next October. Yeah, it's one of those things where you go out there and they go, "How's it feel?" And you're like, "Well, bad." But it's going to feel bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it doesn't feel good. Forever. Can you play? Well, <laughs> incurable ankle. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just going to feel bad, which is crummy. Did, didn't love, uh, you know, it was nice of Sherratt to come on the show Friday, but didn't didn't love him last night. You know what's interesting, too, with uh, Andrew Burnett? Uh, Own Town Platers legend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah holds behind a, the bench. Holds the all time record for points to the Own Town team. But the sense. What's a Plater? With Florida leaving is that. Joel Quenville is still around. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And I think he still has an influence. Really? Yeah. Huh. You could see it, though. Definitely. First of all, they loved him. Sure. They're still paying him. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Might can, as well get his two cents on things. Can, can you watch the games and, you know... Yeah. Let us know your thoughts. All right. I don't think Would it's that a, be a stretch. I don't think it's illegal to have him on the group chat, is it? Not at all. Now, if you're Andrew Burnett, you're not making a couple of calls to Joel every once in a while and saying, Hey, what do you think? That the the thing that Jovo said there about him coming up to him was an interesting line. Saying, I didn't sign I up, didn't up, for, sign this, up yeah. for this. I was supposed to be I was supposed to learn under Joel Quendell yeah. here, not be the guy. And now they, they probably didn't want to pay someone else. Yeah. I'll be surprised if Joel Quenville is not reinstated at some point. With Florida. Somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be Florida, but. Probably where Joel wants uh, it to be. I, I think I just he's pretty think, content. In, uh, I, I just think that uh, when, I, when I still look back at all of this, and here he is, only Scotty Bowman ahead of him, and yet he was the guy that lost his job in all of this. Mm-hmm. And without any real explanation still to this day of who knew what and when exactly, that to me is just really strange that I look at uh, a guy that should be celebrated for an incredible coaching career is out yeah, I, I I mean it's I'm so far removed from how it know, all went know, down I that I, I kind I mean, of you forget. Gotta, you got to jog your memory back yeah. now a little bit. Uh, geez, I just interesting. It's though. just uh, I I th I think there's still uh, if they're probably smart, you know, and and he's willing, which I some have suggested that he is that he could right. still help the team. You know, that so there's that scenario with Joel, and then there's the Mike Babcock scenario where he's another guy, I feel like, you know, totally different cases. I'm not trying to conflate the two at all. But, like, Babs is another guy who just feels like he's, like, kicked out of the league or something. For, you know, for what? He got fired from the Leafs, and, like, how is this guy? He's just not around. And I know he's at the University of Saskatchewan. Do you think he gets a job next year in the NHL? Yes. Do you? Not maybe next year, but I don't think we've heard the last from him. Do you? Do you think he'd uh, ever be an assistant coach? No. I don't know. Think he'd ever come yeah, work I... for a million bucks instead of five or six point whatever? Well, that's a big deal too, right? Yeah. Is can't make six and a half anymore. No. And you know what? After a year of making 90 bucks per week in the, you know, or whatever, I think he's working for free. Actually, he is with Saskatchewan. Um... I bet he'd welcome a lower salary. Although, his contract with the Leafs has to be paid all the way through. So doesn't he just continue to get paid that and the new team picks he up a piece? He was smart when he did his contract yeah. where it was really front-loaded. Well, yeah. So if uh, 
good news is they don't have to cover the AAV. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So if he's got like $2 million left, a, That's team a, good could, point. a team can saw off half of it or whatever. And the or, Leafs would be happy to let him be, do it. Yes. And, yeah. It, I don't think it would be an issue. Mike Babcock would have to be coaching a team that you think underachieved and could still win the Stanley Cup. You know what helps Mike's chances? Daryl Sutter. A guy who came in with that sort of authoritarian, my way or the highway, comes and takes over a team that missed playoffs last year, had a good roster, all of a sudden, come on. Yeah. Just Best team on the honest. <laughs> his post-game comments. Oh, Daryl's killing Didn't it. someone ask him about, like, Saturday night uh, looking like a, an old 80s game? What'd he say? There's no fighting or hitting. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nothing not, like an 80s not, game. Nothing like an 80s game. <laughs> what a guy. Oh, my gosh. Um, He's having fun. So you mentioned that uh, next Tuesday against the uh, Florida Panthers. Leaf schedule coming up here. You wanted to talk about it. We've got, uh, of course, a huge matchup tomorrow night. On Sports at 590 The Fan. Leafs, Bruins. Led by Sammy McKee and yes. Gord Stellick and Brent Gunner. Gunning. Yeah, we got the, we got the pre and post. Huge game. Huge. Yeah. So we assume... Mrazek will get the start. Yeah, I would. I mean, if you don't start him after that game, you're probably never going to start him again. If you feel like Jack's up for it, do you slide him in Thursday versus Winnipeg? I could use the the Jets to take an L before then, so they're maybe less motivated. The Jets need every win right now. Really motivated. I mean, there's no good game to get him in. I, I guess everyone. Well, Philly is a good Philly. Yeah, in Philly. In Philly, I probably go. I probably go Mrazek. Depending on how he does against Boston, think about him again on on uh, Thursday, and then look to Saturday for a, for a Jack Campbell debut if he's ready. This is one heavy stretch of hockey for the Toronto Maple Leafs to end the season, isn't it? Thirty days uh, from now to the Leafs season's end, they play fifteen times. So if you go start tomorrow, fifteen games in thirty days to end their season. So Kipper, I, I'm looking at this and going. Yeah, it's important to get your points, but you're in playoffs. You're going to play one of an excellent team, Florida, Carolina, Tampa, Boston. You're playing a great team. You can't even worry about that. Isn't it more important to come through this 15-game stretch with as many healthy bodies as possible? Of course you want to win, but boy, I'm looking at their decor. You got Muzzin coming back. Giordano's not young. You know, Riley, Brody, like, you need this decor intact. Do you give guys nights off? Do you think about rest in any capacity here, or are you just, you know, Sammy said before the show, you got to play. You got to play hockey. You can't not. What do you think? Who would you rest right now? If you could pick one regular, and I'm not talking Spets, I'm not talking Wayne Simmons. If you could pick, pick one regular to sit out, who's the top of your list? I don't know. Could Morgan Riley use a break? Before you get going into the stretch, he's the guy who's going to play 27 minutes, and then when the games get really important, I think John Tavares is why you're asking me. That's, yeah, that's my number one. Pick. Yes, yeah, I think he's such a key in the in the number two hole that at at some point, maybe it is the last five of the season. I, I think I don't, I'm not sure what it looks like. Detroit is in there, Washington's in there, and Philly's in there. If you're looking at the last six games. Let me so ask you this. How between much would Philly you... and Detroit, yeah, there there could be a, a, night, or a two. night off. How much do you care about home ice? Like, if it becomes clear yeah. you're going to be a 2-3 game against the Bruins, how, you know, how crucial does, does that become? Based on history, I want that seventh game at home. Yeah. Not the, do you they want have it in Boston? It before. Do you want it in Philly? Do you want it in Tampa Bay? Philly. Florida. Oh, I'm sorry, Florida. Yeah, we got Philly. yeah I, got, I mentioned Philly. Uh, no, I, you know, I, I do you want do... it in Florida or Tampa Bay? And you've seen this team go to a deciding game four of the last four years. I got the sense from Sheldon's comments that they want home ice Yeah, in the first round. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's important. Yeah, they had home and ice last year. it's only a game seven scenario. Right, you, you know, don't really in. worry about it until it's the seventh game. Yeah, doesn't matter where the se the seventh game is. I don't, if they couldn't beat the Habs in front of no fans on their home ice, where can they beat the beat somebody? I really a, a, on home ice in front of some fans, hopefully, where you can actually get some mojo. I don't know. I just 
they got to win the first round. Percentages. Less, you want to go to your analytics? Yeah. Less than seven sure. games, please. You're Game right. seven. It's 50 whatever percent. It's better it, than it's, it, losing. It, yeah. It is better than being on the wrong side. On the other team, you're all on the other side. You're also the better team because you're the higher seed. Anyway, yes, it's better to be at home. We know that from years of historical hockey data. So we mentioned uh, goaltending, questionable in Florida, mm-hmm. questionable in Toronto, mm-hmm. apparently qu- questionable <laughs> Calgary versus Edmonton Saturday night. Yeah, that was a strange one. Was it Markstrom in net? Yep, it was. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I trust Markstrom, but he's been a little squirrely lately, so I'm spear yeah, the dude I'm in not San Jose. Su- I, I'm, I'm probably leaning towards the Edmonton situation as well. Right. Again, Saturday night, Koskinen and, and Smith. Did you, did I, I sent you guys the Evan Bouchard play on the 6-5 goal, right? That Holy defense? Holy smokes. Yeah, he got twisted up, didn't he? Well, it was like a combination of like no effort, no shoulder check, twisted up, lost. That was as uh, as silly as the other team can make you look. So, just people were commenting on YouTube about the Game 7 and the fans. I'm not sure fans in Toronto in a Game 7 in a first-round series would help necessarily. Why, more pressure? Can You know, there'd be some tight you-know-whats in that building. <laughs> and the second things start going any sort of any sort of squirrely direction, the way that people would feel in that building, the way people will be reacting towards the team, the the sort of reputation they've built up with their fans. I'm not sure fans in the building for a Game 7 would be such a good thing. I think it's better on the road. I honestly do. So, just going back to JB here, where would you prioritize what you want to accomplish in the last uh, 19 games? Is it health first? Is it... Yeah. Uh, yes, number one. But I don't. But I don't know how you prioritize well, that. I don't know what you do. What's that? It's hockey. Yeah, I don't Guys, know how you prioritize it. Well, there's a lot of ways you can. You you roll four lines. You you, you know you. That's you, a good you, point. you avoid you avoid playing Mitch Marner 23 or 20, 24 minutes if you're trailing. Super crucial down the stretch that right? Marner and those guys are seeing you 20 day, a night, not off. 24 a night. You you give Mrazek. Uh, more starts than probably you would have thought if you were obviously still chasing a, a playoff spot. And you know how it is this time of year. I bet they almost never practice. I know there's some new guys, but I bet they they practice very rarely down the stretch. The other thing for me, Kipper, is just getting a look at all your potential D pairs. You know, if you take the Leafs D right now and look at a healthy group and your left side is um, Riley, uh, Labouche, Muzzin, yeah. Um, what am I doing? Giordano yeah. and Sandine. If you pair any of those guys with Brody, Labushkin, Lilligren, and whoever the other one is. But the point is, you could shuffle them up. I want to see them all. I like all the, basically everyone, but Lilligren is going to have a run to be in the six on the first night, I think. Sandine going to be healthy? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you got real decisions. I like Sandine as a Lilligren's seven. Lilligren's your seventh. If Sandine's healthy? Yes. And Sandine eight. Because I think you're looking at uh, Muzzin Brody. Um, Labushkin. Or sorry, Muz- Muzzin Hall, Riley Labushkin, Giordano, and yeah. Brody. Yeah. Something like that. Correct. I don't know, man. I want Sandine in the lineup. <laughs> I just don't who, who you take Hall out, I guess, but then you mess with your handedness a little bit. Yeah. I I would rather have. He was shaping up to be a pretty important guy down the stretch before he got hurt. Sandine. He was. He was. I agree. I I'm with you. It's it, they're in a good spot with their D. There's a lot of guys, a lot of guys to like there. And and again, I think Lilligren's been good since paired with Giordano. Interesting options for them. So now it's finding offense on the other side of things away from Matthews and Bunting and Marner because I feel like the D is so, pretty good. So let me throw my theory of the the third the second line. I want to put McKay up there still. I want to try that again. I want the virus on the in the center, obviously. But the guy that, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about him in the chat today on YouTube, and a guy that Borney has liked and does not fit on that fourth line is Blackwell. Yeah. He's a guy that's played up in the yeah. in the lineup in other places. And we saw me- a few instances last night where he stepped up and played with Tavares, did we not? Yeah. yeah not, you, just, you know what? Just, just a little bit of a sprinkle. Right out of kills. 
out of kills they did it marner yes. would be on the pk tavares mm -hmm. would go over with blackwell on the side it actually was um nylander at first and then they were like uh oh, it's enough of that so <laughs> i'd love to see a second line of mckayev tavares and just give me a blackwell chance give me How about kasha to... well i'm not yeah, banking on anything kasha all right you want it you want game one yeah all right we're doing lines yeah okay i'll do it right now all right bunting yep Matthews. 58, 34, Marner. 16. You're doing it. Okay. McCabe. Yep. Tavares. Yep. Nylander. Ooh. Okay. Engville. Yep. Kampf. Yep. Kasha. Ooh, it's a good line. Fourth line. Oh, here yeah. we go. Now you got Blackwell. 11. Kerfoot. 15. What's Nye's wearing? Matthew Nye. <laughs> I knew it. Love it. 89. He's wearing 89 for Minnesota. But, I mean, so then Robertson just gets his number kicked to the curb, I guess? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you done? <laughs> no, it. I guess he can. That's I guess it. he can. And uh, you you hope you stay healthy, and if you're not, then you've got Spezza to lean into. And, so you and got Wayne none Simmons. of Spezza no. or Simmons in no. or Clifford in? No. No, it, and listen, if, if, if Knives is not there, then... Uh, it, Clifford gives you a better fourth line feel than anything else out mm -hmm. there, but Kerfoot has to drop down to that fourth line. That 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 that's just such a that your fourth line is Blackwell, Kerfoot, Nice. How do you feel about that? I mean, okay, find somebody else on the left side then, Clifford. Yeah. But what choices do you have? I don't know what no, Marley. No, I Marley. Well, no, it's Clifford Spezza or Simmons is the next guy this, in for sure. This conversation right here that we're having about the fourth line and trying to figure out and trying to have a guy that's not even signed to a contract on the Toronto Maple Leafs yet in Matthew Nyes is why didn't they make the Tyler Mott trade? Why didn't they just give yeah. a third? Why didn't they just give the third back to Vancouver for him? It's they got they got him for a fourth, right? The Rangers. Yeah, I agree, Sam. It's just a guy they're they're screaming out for one more guy. But I mean, we're naming six pretty good players here. Could, between... could have been a cap issue. Could have been just yeah, right. Yeah, but because they they did leave two spot two contracts open. That's a good point. For they college kids. Maybe they, this ever season and, and too. Nye, Matthew Nyes has got. They they signed the uh, Ab 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 What's his Ab name? Abruzzi. That's good enough for me. Abruzzi. So he got the one contract. So I think they're at forty nine. They had to leave one open for Matthew. I think you're right about that. Mm. So this uh, Abruzzese, I'll try not to say his name too much, but was their fourth rounder in 2019. He had 33 points in 28 games with Harvard this season. Um, you know, that's obviously very good. He played uh, for the U.S. at the Winter Olympics, had four points there in four games. And he's traveling with the team to Boston. He's going to play. I don't know if he's going to play, but he's traveling. He's going to play team. for the Leafs in the next week. Yeah. I think it's pretty clear that the the organization and the coaching staff and everyone is seeing the fourth line just like everybody else is. And it's just... They like, see one of these kids getting involved. Yeah, and it, it was hard to watch last night because I thought the Leafs played really well and then, you know, a couple times Simmons couldn't get the puck out. And they had struggled. A couple they, they're it's, struggling. It's tough to, it's, and it, in Gordo, you guys talked about it, it's hard to rag on them because the careers they've had and what they've meant to the Leafs and bringing them back and the guys coming home, but it's just... The team has big aspirations here, and fourth lines are important in the playoffs. Ooh. Yeah. Grind so, line. So I'm going to take your line, and I'll flip it, and I'll do 58, 34, 88. So that's putting a Nylander with Matthews. I'll give John Tavares, Mitch Marner, uh, and then let him play with Kasha. So Tavares, Kasha on the side with Marner. And then you get to keep Engvall, Kampf, and Mikheyev as a line, which has been really good, and still have the same fourth line problems as you. Which, What do you have on the fourth line? Give me well, a fourth line. You can't not play Blackwell and Kerfoot. They're, they're, they're your best guys, and, I, and I'm with you. I, okay. I agree with you on the fourth line. I just, you, you know, when you talk about prototypical fourth lines, they don't have one. They just don't have one. Yeah. And mm -hmm. maybe that's okay. You know what I find really strange, too? And first of all, like, again, Spezza has given them everything and more out of Actually, his maybe, stint. Yeah. But this guy can't play 12 minutes a night. But every time the Leafs are down a goal. He's out there. He's out there. Yeah. 
it's really well like, it's, it's because he, he but he has an offensive upside like he can make a play around the net make a pass he can then play more than 12 minutes he can't he's old oh gosh <laughs> then save him for the back half of the game i will say watching i it's think really i think you every time i watch spezza like try to toe pull someone in the d zone and turn one over and i'm just like ah that's not a fourth line center not, move. you know i love him i love him i think he's so nasty um, love the fake clapper. Love the classic clapper. Love everything he does. Love the guy. This is the luxury, though, for the Toronto Maple Leafs to spend the, the next 19 games figuring it out. Figuring it out. But will they? They've kept this damn first line together without the half shuffle for the whole season. Well, you know what's the strange part of this is when I look think about like the Leafs having this luxury of 19 games. Mm. Is 17 that, now, by the way. 17. Sorry. Yeah, thank yep, you. Yep. Um, they have still on, are they on pace to have like a, a, oh, yeah. a franchise like career? Like one of the here? greatest Leafs yeah. teams of all time. They really should be sweating it out for a playoff spot right now. They're going to finish seventh in the conference and be the best Leafs team ever. Like, <laughs> That's not true, by the way. But Since but, November, this whole Eastern Conference has been decided. Can you imagine now, though, if, if, if just one team was on the outside that's still looking in. No one even How nervous. Close. Nobody's even close. Oh. But say say even Columbus yeah. had 10 more points. And it's not just the Leafs, yeah. but Boston would be nervous, you know, and it'd be yeah. like, oh, here, they're, be they're, they're all having career or franchise kind of se uh, seasons. But yeah. if there was just one team knocking on the door, yeah how you would have felt differently about these last 17 games. I've actually liked the idea in other sports in the NBA. They have like a play in game where the eight, nine seed, is it eight, nine, seven, 10 that yes. play in, in the, the, NBA. the NBA? Yeah. They played yeah. like a single That's game. So gimmicky. I love Couldn't it. agree more. Kipper. Oh, it's for, so for bad. Me, those teams, you're all the same. No, you're all the same play game to see who gets what's, in. I guess, what's the point? 82 earn well i just think earn your playoff spot or you're not good enough a Agree. point a point in your guys favor this year is i don't want to see the nine seed in the east play another the hockey game. Be you don't deserve it i know that's what i mean they don't deserve it so you guys have a a good point here i could do an eight nine play in in general but this year it doesn't work in the east but like you know it's going to be vegas and dallas so the raptors have to get in the the, the legitimate playoffs you got to get to six they may lose in the first game yeah well they got to play probably have to play brooklyn which is not something you want to do on the road. No, they put they would be the home. That would be seat. home. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they got some good players. Don't yeah, well, they? And, yeah, they're pretty. <laughs> Last good. time I checked, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty in good. the six seed right now. Yeah, the Raptors are in the six seed right now, and they're playing a banged up Boston Celtics team tonight. So there you go. There's some little Raptors takes. Any any bets for us, Barney? I got bets. Let me have it. So I've been I've been into the whole bet builder thing lately, where you can parlay a couple events. The Coyotes are playing the Oilers tonight. The Coyotes are such long shot underdogs. So massive odds. Take it. Yeah. Well, I kind of like you're not going to probably not going to win. But if you bet them plus two and a half goals, you can kind of you can get to like minus 140. You parlay that with a over under of some kind. You can make some money. So I'm, I'll am i take them plus one and a half goals. That pays you uh, still get plus odds on that plus 120. Wow. It yeah. always happens this time of year. So, Always these teams. Nothing to lose. That, nothing just, to lose. And Montreal, Buffalo. Yeah. Columbus has done this many times, by the way. They go on a fake run at the end. And oh, and the everything team looks positive. There. Jack up the season tickets again. Get yeah. them all excited. Yeah. If we play like we did down the stretch last year, look out. Yeah. And everyone's like, you're not going <laughs> to. Um, you know, there's no odds in the Leafs game for Tuesday night yet. I imagine it's in Boston. Yeah. I imagine they'll be considerable underdogs. Yeah, probably slight dog. I mean, they slight got the exact dog. same record. Yeah. No. So we'll we'll wait to see what the exact number is before making a call on that. The other one is the Sabres are plus 152 in Chicago tonight. Chicago kind of stinks. Sabres are hot as hell. Uh, I would consider placing, throwing a couple money, a couple bucks at a couple of dogs tonight. Washington's going pretty well now. Yeah, I think it's rolling a little bit. I actually haven't. They got Carolina tonight, I think. Yeah, they do. Vancouver, St. Louis, Buffalo, Chicago. You mentioned Arizona and uh, the Oil and the Kraken and the L.A. Kings. Turning point for Canucks in their season. They got St. Louis, St. Louis, Las Vegas, Las Vegas. 
They are sniffing around the fringes of How a many playoff games they got spot. Left? How many they games? have 15 hockey games left. Three of them against Vegas. What do they need to go? 12 and 3? 73 points. Let's say they got to get to 90. 97? Think 96? that high? 97? 96? So they need 12 wins out of their last 15 games? 12 oh, and 3? 12 and 3? What do you think? I don't know. Teams have won 10 in a row. Yeah. Bruce, there it is. 11 and 4 might might get you close. Ooh, 11, 3 the and 1. making it interesting. All right. Our thanks to Ed Jovanoski today, Panthers TV analyst. And what a great career he had. Stellectricity. Always great to have Gord. The best. Sammy, we good, pal? Feeling good? <laughs> Nobody slapping anybody when we leave, eh? Nobody. No slaps today. Our thanks to Derek, Jennifer, JB. Always a pleasure. And most Thank of you, all, buddy. all of you for watching and listening to The Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Back tomorrow, teeing up Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Boston Bruins. Have a great night, everybody.